Okay, I think that's recording now. Yep, perfect. Go ahead. Well, I think Councillor Granger's internet is probably struggling. Uh, we want to welcome everyone. And uh, I think Councillor Granger has a, a sort of a rural internet connection, so it sometimes, sometimes is slow. slow. Oh, there she is. Hello, Councillor Granger. Go ahead. Sorry about that. No problem. All right, this morning we're uh, looking at a public information meeting and usually the councillor of the area hosts the meeting as part of the, the planning uh, review process to inform the public when the municipality has received an application that may be of any community interest. So the planning staff explain um, the policies under which the, uh, all the council will consider the application and all the criteria used to evaluate this proposal. So. At this time, uh, no evaluation or decisions have been made, and uh, the meeting, uh, the information meeting, also gives the applicant the chance to present the proposal directly to those interested, and it also allows the neighbors to ask questions and provide early comments via phone, email, um, uh, to the planner, and that's included as part of the staff report to the planning advisory committee when it does go there. So as far as introductions, my name is June Granger. I'm the councillor for District 1. With us today, we have Mark Fredericks. He's the planner for the municipality of the County of Kings. And we have Dwayne Mailman, who is our applicant. So if you would like to go ahead, Mark, it's all yours. Sure. Great, thanks so much. I'm gonna share my screen and go through a couple of slides. So we've got a public information meeting. This this meeting is largely intended for the kind of community uh, around this property, for the neighbors and the community around Boxers Harbor. We've got an application from from Dwayne Whalen to rezone this subject property shown here. We'll look at this in a sort of a zoomed out view in a moment. Um, the purpose of this rezoning would be to permit uh, a campground on this property sometime in the future. And again, the purpose of this meeting is largely to inform the public this is happening, um, to explain some of the planning policies that we review as part of our process, and to receive some preliminary feedback. So the proposal is to rezone the property. This is a kind of split zone property, which we'll see on the next slide. So it's in both the tidal shoreland and the rural mixed use zone. But the request here is to take the, the, the full property and put it into the commercial recreation zone. So this is what the zoning looks like right now. The tidal shoreland zone is a is a very much a residential zone that's intended to accommodate, um, you know, ocean side or ocean close to the ocean, um, you know, residential development, whether it be homes or cottages. And the agricultural A2 zone, of course, is is very much a, a mixed rural zone. And so this is a property kind of along the edge of that uh, as you're entering Baxter's Harbor. So this property has two zones applied to it right now. Uh, but it would ultimately, uh, the request at least, is to rezone the full property to the commercial uh, recreation zone. And actually just down the street from Baxter's Harbor, like on your way in, there's another commercial recreation zone um, for a other camp, um, a Christian ministry sort of camp. I can't recall the, the name of it, but there is another P1 zone on this road. And there are often P1 zones that are kind of site specific in in these rural areas. Certainly along the Blomidon kind of bluff, there there are a number of them because there's a lot of good uh, camping opportunities out there. So this is just a photograph of that property. You can see in this area it's heavily wooded. There are some residential kind of rural residential developments along the road, and including this property. This property has a dwelling on it existing, uh, shown here, and then a whole bunch of sort of forested uh, land behind. My understanding is this uh, this property has been in the applicant's uh, family for many many years, uh, and he can probably speak to speak to that. Spent some of his childhood out here, as I understand. So it's a fairly wooded area, which helps a lot with buffering. So if you were an adjacent landowner and there was a campground in here, it helps a lot to have existing vegetative buffers in place um, and, and some of that would be maintained. So the policy, we look to our planning strategy uh, when we get a request like this. If someone requests a rezoning, we look to the planning strategy to see is it intended uh, that there would be the ability to do this? Does council, did council establish the planning strategy in a way that would allow for a rezoning to the commercial recreation zone? And according to this policy, yes, uh, council will consider proposals to rezone lands within any designation 
to the commercial recreation P1 zone. So a lot of times um, rezoning applications are very specific to the area uh, that you're in, but with the commercial recreation P1 zone, uh, it's quite flexible. You can be almost anywhere uh, except for uh, the agri best agricultural land, for example, and um, Lakeshore residential. So there's a few exceptions, but in general, the P1 zone can kind of be considered um, in rural areas. It can be considered in um, urban areas. Um, and so it can exist in many different places. And so in that sense, we <clears throat> the, the planning policy does speak to uh, does speak to some consideration of like, well, if we allow it everywhere, uh, what are the exceptions? And the criteria that we need to meet uh, speak to those exceptions. So first, um, so this is the this is kind of the enabling policy. This is the policy in the planning strategy that says council will consider requests or proposals to rezone land into this commercial recreation zone. Uh, and, but in evaluating those sorts of proposals, council looks to see that the land is not zoned agricultural or A1, and this is generally considered to be our prime agricultural land. It is not uh, zoned Lakeshore Residential or S1, Lakeshore Limited Re Development S2, and these are the similar kind of shoreland zones that are around the lakes uh, in the South Mountain of, of Kings County. And we also avoid the environmental constraints or O1 zone, and this zone is generally applying to areas like floodplains, uh, super steep slopes, uh, and that sort of thing. The other exception is uh, lands within residential designations. So within our growth centers, at least, there's a large most of a growth center is either made up of a residential designation or sometimes usually a commercial designation. Uh, and what this what this sort of policy looks to achieve is directing commercial recreation or P1 zones, campgrounds, golf courses are the sorts of things allowed in that zone. And so this policy helps to kind of guide that type of development into locations that are less likely to have uh, conflicts with with neighboring landowners. So you can imagine in a residential area in a subdivision uh, within a growth center, for example, may not be the best place for a campground, but certainly within a certain commercial area, it could be considered, and certainly within rural areas, it could be considered. And so we look at the property, the, the applicant's property here, uh, it's not zoned any of these things, and so it does satisfy that first criteria. The next one is that we, we verify that the lot can meet the minimum lot frontage requirement and the lot area requirement of the commercial recreation P1 zone. So each zone has a minimum. Usually they establish a minimum uh, lot frontage and that's the distance along the street. Um, and uh, the lot area, of course, is just the, the overall lot uh, size, the footprint of the lot. So we look at those, we calculate those uh, through this review process. We haven't done that at this stage, but we know that it's not in the, uh, we know that it's in, in, it is in an appropriate zone and we are confident that it can meet this, although we will do a review on, uh, on, on that and review the latest surveying information. And then we also look to see that it meets the general amendment criteria. And the general amendment criteria are, are uh, fairly high level. We look at these, um, you know, with every planning application. They, they look at things like uh, servicing. So certainly within growth center areas, there's a water and sewer connection that we need to consider. Excuse me, there's also uh, potential for impact on well fields. And again, some of these are more specific to growth centers because in the rural areas, we rarely have a designated well field protection area. Um, and we don't have services either in this case. So these services would be provided on site, be a well and a septic system. And those are regulated uh, through the permitting process, largely with the province. But we do check that at the permitting stage. So these general criteria also look at the the overall intent of the planning strategy and, and was it was it the intent of the planning strategy to allow for commercial recreation zones? Was it the intent to allow for campgrounds to exist in rural areas as proposed here? So we we consider that um, and we give some thought to that and, and we kind of do some analysis in the staff report uh, that that is to come. So we look at that overall intent of the planning strategy, the intent for the rural area, the intent for the T1 or that uh, tidal shoreland zone. And you know we consider these sorts of things. So we, we look at the intent of the planning strategy. We look at the financial impact. Is, is, there, is there any? Uh, sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. 
We also look at feasibility of services. So is it a really difficult place to get a well or a septic system? Uh, we look at potential for land use conflict and you know, in this situation, do we have neighbors right at the property line? Are there are there adjacent neighbors really, really close here or are they well enough separated that you know the potential is fairly low for land use conflict? So these are the sorts of things that we consider and what we hope to hear from the surrounding community regarding these kinds of concerns. And again, well fields and site suitability. So sometimes we find a site that's super, super steep or very rocky or some sort of challenge that we work with the applicant on. Those are a, a highlight of the general criteria. There, are, there are more, and those will be reviewed in the um, in the planning staff report. In terms of the process, uh, what we're doing here is holding a public information meeting, largely to get some inf information from the surrounding community. So we notify the properties within 500 feet uh, of this for this public information meeting, and those same property owners are notified again for a public hearing if we get to that if and when we get to that stage. So the public information meeting is kind of an early step. Um, we are engaging in a staff review now and we'll bring something forward to the planning advisory committee uh, in the next couple of months. Um, at that meeting, we'll have accumulated um, some analysis of those criteria we will also have accumulated hopefully some feedback from the neighbors and the community surrounding community and that'll give us a better picture of um, how, how we may move forward with this uh, recommended rezoning or this proposed rezoning there are also advertisements in terms of this process much of this is required uh, through the municipal government act that we advertise for some of this too so <clears throat> there'll be an advertisement for this public information meeting and there'll be advertisements for the uh, public hearing as well so this is uh, just my contact information i'll leave this on the screen for a moment before i pass it back to the chair i would just say if you've got any questions um, you can write me an email or give me a telephone call uh, you can reach me at the office. Um, happy to to chat about any concerns that you may have with this sort of development or any kind of change happening in your community. Um, so we hope to hear from some people from Baxter's Harbor, and uh, I'll leave that on the screen for a moment, uh, Councillor Granger. But uh, you're welcome to take it from there. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Mark. Um, uh, Dwayne, do you have anything to add to this? Um, <clears throat> not uh, not the current moment. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Well, just so the public knows, this presentation has been recorded and it's going to be posted on the municipal website. So members of the public will have at least 30 days to view it um, and provide questions or comments. So when you are emailing or calling with questions or comments, um, members of the public uh, are asked to provide their name, address and their community, just so we can keep it all on record. So if everybody is very content with the way things went so far, uh, we're gonna conclude this. And um, uh, Mark Fredericks, the planner, is available to receive any of your further comments or questions regarding this proposal. And you can contact Fred, uh, uh, sorry, Mark at, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Mark Fred. I'm no problem. <laughs> uh, uh, at 690-6276 or by email mfredericks at countyofkings.ca, which is all on our municipality website. That's right. So thank you both very much. And uh, this has been very informative and, and it's going to be very exciting for you, Dwayne. Uh, just before we go, I realized I should probably introduce myself to those who might be watching and uh, need some information <laughs> about myself. Um, as Mark mentioned, my family has owned that, uh, that land for um, approximately 30 years. Um, my whole idea is to kind of revisit how, I mean, I used to uh, be there for most of my, uh, most of my summers during my childhood. And I really just fell in love with Baxter's Harbor and the, the surrounding areas. And I want to, I want to open that up to people to come and experience that that kind of um, that kind of family um, vacation spot. So, um, just kind of opening up our land for other people to come in and and kind of have short term stays. Nice. Great. That's great. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. All right. So, thank you, everybody, and um, I guess that's it for today. Okay. I'll...